everyone, it's Desiree, and I'm going to show you a new kit today. Yes, still getting the Simon Says and the Hero Arts, but this is from Gina K, and I absolutely love her kits. She doesn't do a monthly kit, but she does do like a big quarterly one. So this is the one that's around Christmas. You get 24 sheets of pure luxury cardstock. You get this stamp set, which is a 6x8 Marion Bright stamp set and you also get the coordinating dies that go with it. When it comes to the cardstock, you get three sheets of red velvet, three sheets of glass green, turquoise sea, blue denim. This stamp set here, can you tell I'm skipping around on this one? This stamp set is called the Seasonal Sentiments stamp set. Again, a six by eight. You also get the coordinating dies for it. And then you also get these three dies as well. And they're put on these stamp and storage, which are really great. They're magnetized. I'm not sure about the system, but they're really good. The other card stock you get is four sheets of heavy white, layering white, and a black onyx. So this kit comes very packed. So let's get started. For card number one, yes, this is going to be part one. There will be a part two. So for card one, again, I'm using my Nina Solar White 80 pound as the base, and I'm going to be using the Altenew inks throughout this one. This one is sea glass, and I'm using for the stamp the ornament, and it is absolutely gorgeous. There are so many things that you could do with this. So I'm stamping the first one onto the left-hand side in the sea glass, and then I'm going to stamp a second one a little bit higher to the right. And then once they're set in place, I mean, the details on this stamp, it, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So many ideas. I'm going to the sentiment next. And the sentiment I want to use is the Mary and Bright. I love the scripts. She's got some great stamp sets. I encourage you to check out her website because some of the fonts that are used for her sentiments are really great. I use the Stampin' Up! Knight of Navy ink. I, I love that for a dark blue ink. This is a first for me. I am going to try the Rangers Sticky Embossing Powder. Uh, just got it in and I figured, you know what, I need to play with something. So this is the first time that I'm using it. So it works just like I'm using my Versamark ink, just like an embossing powder. So I'm going to coat this I'm not worried if the string for the ornament is straight or not. You guys know me. I'm wonky. Yeah, hello. And after I heat set it, I'm going to set down in teal my deco foil. I don't have a laminator. I don't want a laminator. So I find other ways to use my foils that I have. I've shown previously to use glue. This time I'm actually trying out the um, sticky embossing powder and it worked beautifully. Look at that. I, I'm absolutely in love with that. <coughs> Excuse me. So also know that once I put that foil down, I like to put a piece of cardstock on top of it and run it through my Big Shot before I pull off the foil. It just helps to sear it down. A little tidbit there. We used the wonky dye on this. I know everyone missed it in one of my videos. I was still in shock that I didn't use it. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue to adhere that down onto the panel. This is the C, the, excuse me, the turquoise C card base that I'm using, top folding four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm popping the ornament up with some foam squares and I'm just going to adhere the top down so that it doesn't get bent or anything like that. And I think beautiful shades of blue. The iridescent sequins, you will see them a lot. I just use these all throughout the cards. So I'm just placing them around in certain areas on the ornaments, but just to give it a little bit more sparkle. But I still wanted to keep the ornament that I did in the foil as my focal point and then attracting down into the sentiment. And that's card number one. Card number two easy peasy. 
I'm using the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies and I cut a piece from a gold glitter paper that I had for my stash. I don't even remember what this is, so I'll link one um, down below. I'm using the embossing pad. I really, I am kind of liking that. Um, it doesn't jam up. <laughs> it's a lot easier to use. So, and I'm using the huge font that she has. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And the fonts on these, again, they're, they're just beautiful. I'm using my Gold Recollections from Michael's Embossing Powder. And I'm going to pull in the embossing pen from Ranger. Think about it. If you don't have sequins or the enamel dots or the Nouveau Drops, you could easily get this pen and use your embossing powders if you should have a lot of different colors in embossing powders. It, no, it's not a sequin, but it is another way to embellish your cards. You could just use that pen, put dots all over the place, and cover it with your embossing powder that you may have. Maybe you just get the iridescent embossing powder. It almost creates the same thing. Again, no, not a sequin, but it's an alternative. I used one of the smaller Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies to cut out my sentiment. So I'm going to adhere the glitter panel down on to her black onyx four and a quarter, five and a half top folding card base. Again, it's always off to the corner. I, I always tilt things when I can. And I'm going to prop the sentiment that's on my Nina Solar White 80 pound straight onto the card. And that's the card, a very simple but yet elegant looking card. For the third card, this one's kind of detail, and I think this one's actually my favorite. The and awesome colors are going on in the room because I forgot to turn off one of my lights. So you are actually seeing the reflection of a pink t-shirt coming across here. So sorry about that, but you know, it adds ambiance. So I'm going to be using the poinsettia stamps and the leaves. So the first color I'm using from Altenew is crimson, and I'm really liking these inks, very much so, which is, you all know, very dangerous. The next color that I'm using is called rouge. Doesn't that sound fantastic? Rouge. So it is a lighter shade, and I'm going to stamp two uh, of the smaller poinsettias. These are not layering stamps. Sometimes you like layering, sometimes you don't. Um, I'm a little frustrated there. I didn't get a perfect impression, but you know what? That's okay. With what I'm doing with this, I'm able to cover that up. And even if I wasn't, I would find a way to cover that up. We don't stop. So I'm grabbing the two different size leaves that she has in the kit, and I'm using three shades of green for these. I'm going to be using the Altenew Frayed Leaf Forest Glades, and Evergreen. I, I really am. I, and what I like about these inks is they're very close to the Gina K. I'm very torn between the Gina K inks and the Altenew inks. I'll probably end up getting them both. So you can see I have everything stamped there. Beautiful. Now I'm coming back in with my embossing pen. And I'm just going to go over the little dots that are in the center there, and I'm going to go over the vines. Because I'm actually going to use a gold embossing powder over those, just to give it that little bit of oomph. Um, without adding any sequins or, or anything like that. So yeah, I am. I'm, I'm torn between the Gina K inks and the Altenew. As I said, I'm probably going to get them both eventually. Um, but I really do like the Altenew, only because you can buy them in sets of four. Like the, the greens, you can get the Evergreen, the Forest Glades, the Frayed Leaf, along with Jet Black in a set of four. Um, and it's reasonably priced from Altenew, I, I think. Um, I always wait for a sale. And you can see how great that looks on that flower. I know, I'm jumping around again. Um, and you can see I did that to the leaves and the two smaller of the poinsettias. Now even with the leaves, I didn't use my powder tool on this and I'm okay that there's little spotches of 
of, of fine dots of embossing powder. I think it adds to the leaf. I'm going to use all of the dies because we have dies for each of these and you can see I've cut them all out and they've cut out really great. Not too big of a white line that goes around it. I've pulled the Christmas die that came with the kit along with the shadow or the cloud, what I call the cloud, and I've cut that out three with black and one out of the vellum. So now I'm going to layer these three together for the black. It's just going to give a little bit of dimension. You can make it like some say you can make your own piece of chipboard. I just say dimension. You know, chipboard's really, really thick. Um, and I usually stop at three. <laughs> I don't go too far past that. Sometimes I will, depending upon the card. But for this one, I thought three um, was was fine. I do not believe, what's nice with this too, the eye is actually a little bit attached to itself, so we didn't have to go looking for the dot like I did for 20 minutes, so that's why we've got a lot of cuts going on in here. Um, it's actually right there, which is really nice. How many times do we have a die and we lose the little tiny dot? I do every time. So that's what that's going to look like, and I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to use the Jet Black. Now, I still do like my VersaFine Black Onyx for detail, but this was not bad um, for a black. This is, as I said, part of the green shades because that would be your final shade level, honestly, when it comes to green, believe it or not. I'm going to trim this sentiment down, and I'll be honest, guys, I do this horribly. I cannot get those thin slithers. I end up using my scissors. You can see I try this a couple times. I keep my fingers crossed on this, uh oh, slowly cutting, because I, I really want it to be a very thin, um, a very thin line that's going to sit, it's going to end up underneath Christmas, and you can see I grab my scissors um, to do a cut. Again, these are handmade cards, um, you know, they're, <laughs> they are works of art. Don't get me wrong, what we put into them and how we create, they are works of art, and I truly, honestly believe that. But we don't need to get perfect. You really got to let that go, and I struggle with that too. So I'm playing with the placement here, and there's a section of this video I lost. I was so upset when I lost this. But I'm actually going to use that peel and seal. This is a first for me. I've never used it before, and yeah, I'm hooked. I'm very, very hooked. But I'm doing the placement, again, three poinsettias. Even though I have an even number of leaves out, you'll see I only use an odd number of leaves, and that would be my phone so rudely going off. I'm so sorry about that. Only me. Okay. So, again, I'm only using an odd number of leaves when it comes to this as well. So, again, this is where I lost. I wanted to show how I placed it down. But all I did was just lay it over and really press down on the loose pieces to make sure that when I picked it up, all of the pieces were attached. So the Christmas was already adhered down because um, I put the glue underneath the black to set that in place because I knew that's where I wanted that and the focal point was going to come off of that. I'm only putting, using my art glitter glue, on the leaves. I want those set. I'm not worried about the three poinsettias because those can be played around with. A and you'll see what I mean by that because I want this to actually come down onto the Christmas sentiment. You guys know, I, I there's just, for some reason for my eye, I like things to look different. I like things to overhang and be crooked. Sometimes tearing paper, I love to tear paper. It's, it's a good, it's like that, that's my therapy. Um, so kind of doing those odd things, things that we don't say um, are, are kind of in my wheelhouse. So I've put a single layer of foam squares on the two smaller poinsettias and I'm putting a double layer on the main, the large poinsettia. And we're going to set the two smaller ones down first and again what I'm I want I want to achieve here is to make sure that 
the edges of the leaves are tucked in underneath. So we can just move things around. And you can see that one just hovers over the the C as well. That is card number three. I do believe that this one is my favorite. Card number four, um, I actually wanted to try a new embossing powder that I just got at Michael's. It's called a sil Silver Bling Opaque. It's kind of cool looking. So we're going to create my own pattern paper. So you can see that the pink highlight, I remember to turn the lights off, but now we have the sun glare coming in on my arms. So we were just not <laughs> winning with this video, but we keep going. We just keep going. So we're going, I want to create a pattern paper with all of the snowflakes from her stamp kit. And we're just going to go around. And what's great about this embossing powder is it's opaque white with silver flecks in it. So it's not a solid silver. Um, and you can still see that pink coming off. So I've taped it down to a board. This is just a, a board that I have in the house. And I'm using a Faber-Castell student paint set. I actually found it back in the corner in my Michaels store. And it was only $2. Um, I will see if I can find it on their website. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Um, but this, if you guys do have a Michaels, this is an awesome paint kit. Uh, very much so. It's got the warm and the cool colors and everything else. Okay, stop rambling about that. So what I'm doing here is I wet the base, the panel first, with a large paintbrush with clear water. And now I'm coming in with the two shades of blue. I wanted to go for a variegated look at first and have these two merge together. Of course, you can see I changed to a much larger brush because it was taking forever. I dried the layers. I dried in between the layers a couple times. And this is what I ended up with. And I really liked the shade. There is some variation to it. It is a little bit darker at the top. But I just kept on stroking back and forth. I was not looking for it to be solid. But again, I did start with a wet on wet technique. Wet your paper first then add your color. I'm taking the white watercolor paint. I wanted to try this out, see what it looked like, putting it on a block, adding water to it, and just speckling along, splattering across this. And I have to say, when it dried, they stayed that white. For a watercolor white to be that opaque, I was very pleased and surprised. It's a keeper. I'm going to use the Marion Bright Sentiment again, and I'm going to use my Knight of Navy Stampin' Up ink. I'm putting that, <coughs> excuse me, onto a white piece of cardstock, and it's double the wonky on this card. I did have to re-stamp it because I didn't have a big enough piece. So, yep, two wonky dies going on here. And then we're just going to pop up the watercolor panel down on her denim blue four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base and then we're going to pop up the sentiment panel as well we could leave it like this because it the camera doesn't show all of the glitter that is showing within those snowflakes but we're going to add more because i'm going to add more of my Doris iridescent sequins. Yes, you all know. I, I love these sequins. I, I think I could live with just these sequins for all my cards. Um, I, I think they're great. You can see that they change colors. Yes, they're changing pink because I have a pink t-shirt on. <laughs> for the last card, card number five within this part one, I'm going to use a piece of vellum. And again, this is the first time I've embossed this big on top of vellum i wanted to give it a shine and believe it or not the vellum that i'm using is from an office supply store you can actually print on this vellum um, it's a little bit thicker i'm going to use the gina k trees stamp from one of her sets here it's a beautiful detailed set of trees and she's got some great videos as well i do encourage you to check out her channel we have a huge 
mistake on this card. I wanted to stamp happy and I slipped. So I'm just wiping it off. I'm going to try to use my powder pad, my embossing powder pad, to try to re stamp it again and to see how it looks again when I put, use my white embossing powder. It is a Recollections embossing powder. Remember, it's actually called Snow. Um, it is a beautiful way. And you can just say, it was not, it, it's like a big blob. It's like a, a bad bird coming in for a landing, I guess. I don't know. It, it was just bad. So that will go <laughs> away. I was very upset. But again, see, we don't stop. Now, how do we remove that? There's a couple different types of uh, brushes that I keep specifically for my embossing powders. And this one is a very stiff hog brush, um, hog style type brush that is able to just remove all of that. So when you heat, when you heat set on vellum, there is vellum specifically for embossing. This one, I don't know if it is, but it goes through a printer. So it's got to take some heat. Just do it in little layers. Keep checking it. Do it in, in the back of it. I put a board down so that I didn't bump up, you know, put waves in my cutting mat there. I cut out the, ha the Hanukkah sentiment. Again, I love the font on this. Um, and I just really, I wanted to make a, a happy Hanukkah. That's part of our holiday season as well. Um, as I'm filming, when I'm filming this and editing it, it's actually Thanksgiving. So for those of you that celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Um, there's a lot that we do need to be grateful. Um, I know I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do this. So I've set in the Hanukkah sentiment just below the trees. I'm so glad I, by the way, I used the white cardstock underneath so that you could see it oh so well. Yep, that's a great thing for me. The ribbon that I'm using is a Shimmer Glimmer Organza uh, ribbon from Paper Mart, and I will link that below. You can get 25 yards for like $1.25. And this is three eighths of an inch wide and they have all kinds of widths. That's where I get all my ribbon from. I think it's very inexpensive um, and it's wonderful ribbon. I use it for everything. So I finally put this down on a denim cardstock. It's a top folding four and a quarter, five and a half, but we're gonna make it a side folding. So I set my bow down. Yes, I was able to make that bow. It's the only way I can make a bow. <laughs> I cannot make bows either upside down or that way. So I'm going to set my panel down onto this. I used, I put glue behind the thick areas of the embossing and the um, sentiment that I used. And I'm gonna stamp happy on some dark blue cardstock. And we're gonna heat set that. And we're going to use our scissors. Not even going to try with the small guillotine, the Tonic Studios Tim Holtz that I have. And we're just going to cut that out. It'll eventually be very thin and fishtailed on the side. Um, but I thought this was really fun to work with again, first time. Um, but again, for those of you that we have a lot of wonderful holidays coming up, um, Christmas and we have Hanukkah. Um, right now, of course, the States, we are in Thanksgiving. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season because now it starts. No, I am not that person that puts my tree up before Thanksgiving. I wait till December 1st. These are the cards that we've made in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because there will be so much more. But I do encourage you to check out her site, GinaKDesigns.com. I will have it linked below along with a link specific to this kit. She does some wonderful kits. Her inks are phenomenal. Her papers are to die for. Um, they are absolutely wonderful to work with as well. Um, again, it is Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful holiday if you celebrate. If you don't, in my mind, you're celebrating with me. Thank you so much for your support. We continue to grow. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down below. I know some people are having problems getting through with the comments. I'm going to work on that. 
And remember, everyone, always be creative.